Hello and welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where this week I'm giving you something a little bit different. Like I said, something kind of special this week. Obviously, I'm not in my usual place wearing my usual attire. This is very off the cuff. I'm actually in, I mean, literally in the middle of working on some lenses for another video series that we're doing. One that kind of snowballed, but you are gonna love when we finally get it pulled together. I need to create a set of four identical lenses. And I want those lenses to be a very unique shape with some very unique features. So rather than just do that behind the scenes, I'm gonna actually uh, kind of let you watch what I'm doing, talk about it a little bit, and I think maybe you'll get a, better, a little bit better idea about some of the things you can do by hand and just how much some of these lenses can take. This is a lens pattern blank, and you don't see these very much anymore. They are still available, and as you're about to find out, they still can come in quite useful. Most frames obviously are wider in the A than they are in the B. So normally one would hold the pattern this way. What I'm going to do, because this is a very special test that I'm going to be working on, I'm actually going to turn it like this. And my goal here is to cut four lenses in the identical shape. And basically what I'm trying for is kind of like a skull look, okay? So what I'm going to do, I mean, this will be the top of my head, this will be my chin. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I, I, I've got my 35 mark and my 30. I think I'm just going to kind of cut across that and cut across that. And so that gives me kind of my chin there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try to take this file here and do this. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm probably going to have to take it into the workshop. I'll move everything in there. But let me see if I can just. Well, that's not too bad. I can kind of live with that. I got a little skull action going there. All right. And uh, eventually I'm going to want some some eye holes. So let's. Let's set up for that. Uh, I'm going to just grab my drill index here, uh, make it a decent size hole. Uh, let's go a quarter inch here. And again, I can use kind of uh, kind of go right in between my 25 and my 25. Why don't we go ahead and mark that? And just keep in mind, all I'm doing here is playing. I'm trying to visualize what my final lens will look like. Play, experiment, have a little fun. So, yeah, yeah, those are fun. That looks pretty good. All right, draw a hole right there. That looks pretty good. Again, I, I would obviously probably do this in a vise, but. My lighting and everything is good here. So. All right, so you can, hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, we've got our chin down here, we've got our two eyes, and somehow we're gonna have to make a little face, a uh, little smile kind of thing down here. I'm gonna have to wait on that, I think. I'm gonna have to do that on the lens. I don't wanna mess this up because I'm gonna need this to hold it in the edger. So that's kind of about as far as we can go with this at the moment. What I'm gonna do, I'll show you in a second, I'm gonna to touch it off on the hand stone so that this is nice and smooth when it hits the edger. I simply know from personal experience and just time, uh, made a lot of patterns in my life that the smoother the edge of the pattern is, the better results you're going to have. Crucial, if you have a hand stone and you're working with a pattern, by all means do this. Keep feeling the edge with your finger. Even the slightest little bump will show up in your final product. When all was said and done, after some trial and error, some experimentation, trying the pattern in the edger, this is what I en actually ended up with. 
And this was, I think, maybe four, maybe five attempts working through this pattern, bringing it back out to the shop, doing some more handstone work, doing some more grinding, filing. And at last, after much trial and error, it was finally ready for the edger. Now, the reason I'm using a pattern rather than trying to do this with individual lenses is because I want consistency. I want to be able to duplicate the shape over and over again in case you know, I ever wanted to use it again. Obviously, I could keep this pattern around if I had an old edger. Of course, a nice, beautiful new one lets me save this shape. And there it is, so I could actually recall it up again anytime I, I wanted to. I'm, I'm far from a, a great artist at this stuff, but the thing I want you to take away from this is just don't be scared. Um, a polycarbonate lens, a Trivex lens, single vision, no bells, no whistles. You're talking about a couple of dollars. Don't be scared to experiment. There is nothing that I've used here today, nothing that you're going to see that was special. I'm using basic hand tools, a crummy old file out of my toolbox drawer, a regular Dremel tool with an ordinary drill bit. Guys, there's nothing special. This was not a, you know, a $300 add-on special Drivex drill bit or something. So something I pulled out of the workbench. Lens blank. Did it all by hand. I cut, I sanded, I smoothed. I went on the wheel. I used my own grinding stone. I started with it. It was a little bit too large. Put it into the edger. It didn't work. I had to take it out. For every success, you're going to have 10 failures when you're doing this stuff. So you have to practice. For every success, you're going to have 10 failures when you're doing this stuff. So you have to practice. So you have to practice. In fact, if you've noticed my original holes that I drilled, once I had to make this smaller so that it worked in the edger, they don't line up anymore. So what do I have to do? I had to create another template. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take these lenses, put them over my template, and drill a hole, drill a bunch of holes in them. Obviously, these are not going to be in the next issue of Lens Fancy magazine, but they certainly will do the job for what I need. What I really want you to take away from this is, again, just don't be scared. Try this stuff, do it, pick up some lenses, practice, play around with it, and with time, with practice, you can actually make a truly handcrafted pair of glasses. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you again next week.